St. Michael's Church in Jersey City hosted a meeting of the local NAACP and Urban League focusing on stopping violence and creating job and business opportunities within the black community. Multiple residents aired their frustrations with the culture within the black community, as well as the failures of the full administration to provide safe streets, create job opportunities, and provide city contracts to black owned businesses. This is a black problem. Our children need black men to stand up in front of them. This cannot be legislated in City Hall. This cannot be legislated in City Hall. Mayor Fuller cannot change this problem. Jersey City Police Department can simmer the problem, but they're not going to stop it. The problem is the absence of the black man in the home. And when we march down the street or Martin Luther King Drive, all the thugs and the gangsters got out of our way. Not because we're bad, but we came in numbers and confronted them as black men and said, brothers, you are going to stop selling drugs in front of these little children here. You're going to stop shooting in front of our children, and we're going to deal with you. I'm not prejudiced, but I'm going to say it straight up. White people, Puerto Rican people, Chinese people can come in here, grab up all the property, and they're not hiring us. Our money, that money not coming in our neighborhood. So when the NAACP, Urban League, the mayor office, I done been there too, to the mayor action bureau, we keep on putting these people in, in these chairs that speak the same thing over and over and over, and I'm gonna say it again, over again. Policing, we need more police out here. And I say that to say this, I come in at various times of the night. I come in, um, I come in 2.30 in the morning from work. I come in at three o'clock in the morning from work. I come in at four o'clock in the morning from work. I also leave at five o'clock in the morning for work. And there's no police in sight. I'm literally, Kick me not, I'm literally opening my door, peeking out to see if anyone is on the corner. I'm literally doing that, and I'm not a punk. I'm gonna let you know, I'm not a punk. I carry a gun, but I'm still peeking out my door. And as I drive, there's still no police outside. They're not out there. With these young people coming out of jail, I think that the NAACP need to step in and find out why the city has said, we're going to give some of these people jobs, we're going to make sure they get a share of the uh, wealth coming in here with these contractors. Well, I went to the city hall so many times and I got tired of going there because of the fact they, tell, they promise you the world, they give you nothing. And the same thing about the new mayor, I thought he was going to be somebody special. He's worse than it the worst. And you people need to realize when it comes to when it comes to putting somebody in office, everybody's gonna promise you something which they ain't gonna deliver. But this man ain't delivered nothing for these people. So I, I hope you all hurry up and get together and we go down to City Hall or where we need to go and make sure these people know that we are aware of our kids out here and ain't got no jobs, don't have no place to work, no place to go. And this is why we got a problem on the street. That's right. People like Miss Thompson, Miss Watson, my mother, Miss Tish. I mean, they came through a time 30, 40 years ago when there were problems, civil rights problems, voting problems, when they overcame a whole lot of those obstacles. They elevated themselves from one social class to another social class. They got jobs. They changed. They progressed. And things got better. And we don't need an outside agency or anything through the mayor or um, a greedy to come in and think they can resolve our problems. Our answers are right here. The black problem is a black problem. A white person, I mean, no, no, nothing against them. They don't have the experience or insight to solve our problems. Um, but is not the answer. I just, I just came home from jail, county jail. I'm in the reintegration program. And I was very disappointed at the job training program that they offered the inmates because four of the guys was on parole. They was on three years, four years, two years. And after the week of training, what they had, some two of the guys have a high school diploma. How are you going to get a guy a job with no high school diploma? And then when we finished the resume writing the concept of it, they put us on Craigslist. And y'all paying two job specialists 
50, 60,000 dollars a year on McGreevy's payroll to send me to Craigslist, I'd go to Craigslist at the library. I don't need that type of help. They need to be sitting at a desk, called up agencies and companies, and the city needs to give incentives out to hire these experts to get jobs. I mean, some real solutions, some creativity, some hard work. Not nobody in the shooting time in the office trying to get this job done. Assemblyman Charles Maynard spoke about the need for the community to frequent black-owned businesses, an offensive painting, and how the public school system is a pipeline to prison. The one thing that I told a group once before was, if we was to honestly one day, one Saturday, all of us, not go to Newport and shop, that's right. Uh -huh. we shut them down. If we were to stop and just look at Monaco King Drive, yeah. and you start from uh, Communipore, well, I'm sorry, Grand Hall, all the way to Warner, on every single block, you got a Chinese restaurant, two bodegas, or a church, and a chicken joint. And the important thing about that is that we don't own none of them. So we're not really investing back into our own community. It's the little things that bother me. The painting of Say Last Court, prison grant. Yeah. 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 Now, the gentleman said that we need all our men involved. Well, I put a bill in to the state requesting that they look at hiring and educating more black men as teachers in the lower grade. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't know Trenton. Yes. Trenton is not always with us. Right. Okay? And they thought I was kind of crazy for doing that. But I stood and I explained to them that little Johnny sometimes don't see a man until he gets to some of his grade. And at that time, it was too late. So we got that black man and that minority, put it that way. In the kindergarten and the first grade, at least these children get an opportunity to see a man. The respect level can change. Myself and Ms. Cunningham, we have worked hard on certain bills. And the unfortunate thing you don't see is you don't know the bill we put through. I just used to put a bill out saying that if a person comes out of jail and they're on parole or probation, they still should have the right to vote day That's one. Right, right, right. It has nothing to do with the crime. They did their time, they're out, they should have the right to vote. Right. But a lot of things are put in place to keep us down, but a lot of things are keeping us down, we're keeping us out there. So it's those little things. Those bodegas, each one of them make about $30,000 a month just on the car. Just on that car. And we continuously go in there and we patronize. But what we have to do is we have to find a way to educate ourselves. We have to understand that we have to come together. We got to open up a store. If I open up a chicken joint right next to a crown chicken, I won't get no business. No. But I, I truly believe, I'm, I'm going to end with this here. And you may not believe me, but we are truly all we have. That's right. We are truly all we have. That's right. That's right. As, uh, as a, a School system. I'm very upset with the school system because I truly believe that our school system is, is pretty much the pipeline to the prison system. Yeah. I'm thinking I'm learning. Victims of gun violence were also remembered. My friend's son got shot, excuse me, in April. 15 times, seven of them hit him. A murderer is walking around here now. He can be among us. You know what I'm saying? What it is, we're not making a difference. We're sitting here right now. The NAACP is right here with us. I didn't went to Steve. I didn't went to Mohammed. I didn't went to McGreevy. I'm coming to my people. What can we do as a people to come together? This is what we're here now. Stop the violence. I am now going to be the product or the voice of a child that was slain. Okay? My son, just a quick synopsis, my son was murdered in 2006. My way of dealing with it was move out of Jersey City. Move out of Jersey City, Jersey City don't offer anything for children, they have no safety here, blah, 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 blah. and the list goes on, we all know. Born and raised in Jersey City, Lafayette Gardens, yes. It starts within you. Right. We raise the children at home. 
Can we predict what they do when they walk out of our homes? No, we cannot. I had to deal with, yes, Antoinette, you raised your child the best that you knew how. What he does when he leaves is another story. Yeah, I too have lost my son to violence. He was murdered September 7, 2010. And no one has um, called me. I called to speak to the um, prosecutors, prosecutors and detectives, but they totally don't say anything to me. But, um, that's, I, I think that's the hardest question about what we're going to do about violence and protecting our children. My son was murdered in his house. He was an expiring rapper. He wasn't trying to um, hurt anybody. That's where I get my fire from because I try to raise a good man. And I just love, I love my black people. I, I, it's not even a question, it's just, I love my people, and that's my son's song. The last song he made was, I love my people. And I feel the same way, I love my people. I get so excited when I see our people doing something, doing good, doing, I mean, when I tell you, it does, does something to my heart. It's because of my ancestral who, how we came from so, we can't, we, we're people that, you can't kill us. You can't get rid of us. We're here forever. I'm Michael Shern with Hudson County View, the eye of the community.